Hi there and welcome to our regular episode of Hoo-Ha Sports Today. On this show, we will catch up on some Premier League transfer news and an item on seven Malaysian athletes who have been appointed sports ambassadors by one of the country's leading telecommunications company. But first, as promised earlier in the week, let's take a look at the latest WTA and ATP tennis rankings, plus who is big on the money list. We start with the women's standings. Not much has changed in the rankings, but the winners of three Grand Slams so far this year have certainly brought home the bacon. It's Caroline Wozniacki, still without a Grand Slam title to her name, who tops the rankings and has pocketed a decent $2.1 million. She still has some 2,300 points ahead of second on the list, Kim Kleisters. And it looks like Wozniacki will still be at the top come the US Open. But Kim should be happy that she's already taken care of her daughter's education fund with $2.3 million in the bank. The other players remain where they are in the rankings except for Francesca Schiavone and Petra Kvitova, who swapped places and after her Wimbledon win, Kvitova is the top money earner. The £1.1 million she received for a win over Maria Sharapova raises her total earnings close to $3.2 million. While still in the money pit, Lina's French Open win just puts her a tad behind Kvitova. While in the men's standings, things shuffled up at the top, with Novak Djokovic replacing Rafael Nadal as the new world number one tennis player, even before they played the final. Unofficially, of course, but as the rankings were released on Monday, the Serb has more to smile about. His rise to the top has much to do with his 50 wins in 51 competitions this year alone, and that has contributed to his earnings total amounting to $7.6 million. That drags Nadal down to second, but with $5.2 million in the bank, that should ease the pain a little. The other seven-digit earners are Federer, Murray, Soderling and David Ferrer. While Game on Fee, Marty Fish, Thomas Burditch and Andy Roding look set to be playing musical chairs, being so close in the points. But there will be lots of tennis competitions for the players to pick up points and cash before the next Grand Slam event, the US Open, which begins at the end of next month. Time to update you with some transfer news from the English Premier League. First up, Liverpool are expected to complete another signing in the next 24 hours, successfully landing one of their key targets, Blackpool's Charlie Adam. This after a six-month chase for the central midfielder, with Blackpool rejecting two earlier bids, with six million as the highest offer. But reports are indicating that Blackpool held out for a nine million pound deal. Adam is expected to arrive at Anfield for a medical and to discuss personal terms. Next is news on Tottenham's Luka Modric. It's common knowledge that the Croatian has put in a request for a possible move to Chelsea. And after yesterday's talks with club chairman Daniel Levy, Modric is not going to move to Chelsea or any other club, no matter how much money is offered for him. Levy stated the decision to retain Modric was non-negotiable and only managed to sort things out with the player after he returned from holiday. So now that they've had the conversation, Levy claimed that Modric was at ease with the decision. Not the end of it though. Chelsea are expected to return with a fresh bid after 25 million was rejected by Spurs. Roman Abramovich is planning a 33 million pound offer plus tripling Modric's weekly wages. He currently earns 50,000 pounds a week. What's that saying again? Make me an offer I can't refuse? Because that's what Manchester United have done to mess up Chelsea's pursuit of Modric. Sir Alex Ferguson is planning cash plus two players in exchange for Modric. Rumour is that United are offering 10 to 12 million pounds plus Dimitra Berbatov and Johnny Evans. This, I think, is just to thwart Chelsea's intentions, but we'll let this one simmer for a couple of days. That leaves us with one final item. Seven Malaysian athletes were appointed sports ambassadors by one of the country's leading telcos in the country. This is Maxis Communications' initiative to support the development of sport in the country. It is also to recognize, inspire and reward selected top performers in their respective sport. Among those who are now Maxis sports ambassadors are from diving, Pandilila Renong and Leong Manji. Badminton's world number one, Lee Chong Wei and double sparing of Kuken Kiet and Tan Bun Hyong. Cyclist Azizul Hasni Awang or Splinter boy as I like to call him and the country's top men's squash player Mohammad Aslan Iskandar and here's Aslan, here's Aslan describing the value of the sponsorship I feel I need to live up to Maxis's uh, massive achievements in the country it, it's a lot you know and uh, it's it's just it's just synergy of so many things so I, th- I just yeah we all I'm sure we all as ambassadors we're all grateful again hence why I, I, I uh, I highlight the fact that this initiative is so important because it gives hope 
you know, like we all know that you know the government sector is, can only help so much, and you know by pushing like private sectors to come in, it gives the younger generation. Who, I'm not saying that everyone's goal and money orientated, but you know sometimes you give too much, it's not good. You give too little, it's not good. And and it's the same with sport. You know, you you uh, you over pressure, you're too relaxed. You need to find that balance. And I and I think. I mean, I know the contracts, and I think it's a great balance. And then there are perks. It just keeps you on your toes, and it's all about looking forward, being uh, motivated. Sometimes on your down days, you have. And being sponsored again is a responsibility. You know, for athletes, you, I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm, it's a hit and run. I feel great. Whoa, I'm done. You know, no, you. It's it's a responsibility. You know. The sponsorship is for a period of 18 months and is valued at approximately two million Malaysian ringgit. Well. Well done to all of them and now if only we can get a sponsor for our show. So while we hunt for that, join us again tomorrow for another commercial free episode of Hoo Ha Sports Today. Till then, I'm Patrick for the team saying it's bye for now.